The Jusky Social Cultural Theory of Child Development discusses the impact of social factors on the identity and capability of children. According to Vygotsky, learning is a social process with a variety of members in the child's community being responsible on their own levels for the progression of understanding that children hold for the world around them. Those in the macro system of a child's environment include government bodies that regulate the quality of teaching and assessment, such as ACARA and the TQI in Australia. Those in the meso level of a child's environment provide the facilities and resources that children may access in their social development and may contribute to the wider community-based support systems available to a child. These include the school, tutoring facilities and sports groups and facilities. Those in a micro system of a child provide tailored one-on-one -on -one social support for the development of a child, particularly in the younger years where much of a child's identity and understanding of the world is established with little regulation from the other socio-cultural levels. These include the parents and caregivers of the child and those who interact with it on a nearly daily basis. The Joski implies that by social constructivism, the guidance and collaboration of the individuals from every level of a child's context is a key influencer of a child's ability to learn and engage with the world. Another key factor of Vygotsky's theory is the role of language in child development. Vygotsky hypothesizes that self-talk, particularly observed in younger children, as the reciting of the steps of a process, is an essential part of learning. As through repetition, children manage to replicate this correct sequence of events, internalizing the instructions to help them conduct the process more efficiently in the future. This becomes a tool to help shape the thought processes of a child and is essential in their development. A child's socio-cultural support system are essential in helping them navigate what Vygotsky calls the zone of proximal development. In any stage of development, children will possess their own set of skills. These are tasks they complete with no interference from others. This stage refers to the level of competence that students have with the task that they can be expected to fulfill independently. It is called the zone of achieved development. The zone of proximal development describes the task a child can learn through po by proxy, through the help of others who are more developed at the skill in question. This stage explains what children can achieve when supported by those of their social settings, which can differ widely from child to child. The final stage of proximal development is the task a child can't achieve, even with support from their socio-cultural support systems. It is important to note that the zone of proximal development varies dramatically over the child's lifetime, and especially between children. It is not a solid indicator of intelligence or lack of support in the home environments, and is influenced by any number of factors. All children learn and develop differently, and the zone of proximal development is a model designed for its fluidity in expressing the differences between learners. So what are the implications of Vygotsky's socio-cultural development theory in the contemporary classroom? Mainly, it describes the importance of establishing opportunities for the social transferal of knowledge, whether this is direct transferal from teachers or inviting more skilled people in specific areas to share their expertise through excursions or guest speakers, or even collaboration with more skilled peers. The theory encourages interactions of all stakeholders in education to meet a consensus on the expectation for students' learning, to ensure that learning occurs smoothly and unanimously across all levels of a child's education. As an educator, this can be achieved through, mainly through encouraging caregivers and other members of the child's microsystem to take a more active role in their child's education. This can be achieved through ensuring that there are easy channels of communication for parents, to better understand the nature and implication of their child's learning in the school environment. Communicating with parents also assists the educator to more readily gauge and discuss a child's individual learning needs and the zones of proximal development, assisting educators to better differentiate teaching to provide the best possible outcomes for the student. The theory also highlights that discouraging self and group discussions could be problematic to the learning development of children and should be limited as much as possible. Of course, there are situations where this is inappropriate, such as situations where noise levels are detracting from the ability of other students in their learning goals, 
or ones where teachers may be assessing the student's individual knowledge. The Jotsky Social Cultural Theory of Child Development discusses the impact of social factors on the identity and capability of children. According to Vygotsky, learning is a social process with a variety of members 